Welcome back to Kushtika Garage, everyone. I got a fun one for you today. So I just came back from a two month long overlanding trip to Prince Wales, Alaska, and I blew a rear wheel oil seal, an old pig, the Alaskan Overland rig. Pig's 2001 LB7 Duramax GMC Sierra 3500 crew cab long bed dually with a freshly rebuilt 1982 Paris Valley camper on the back of it. And because we're going in there anyways, and I haven't changed them yet, I'm going to also do the bearings. Since Pig is a dually, there are two bearings per side. So, let's go ahead and dig into it. Alright, to get this party started, you're going to want to chalk up the front wheels of the truck. Go ahead and jack it up. Get your stands under there so she's nice and safe. Uh, unless you don't have an uh, impact wrench then you're going to want to uh, loosen up the wheels before you jack it up. So we're going to need a 22 millimeter to uh, take off the lugs. We'll need an 18 and a 21 millimeter to remove the calipers. And I believe a 19 millimeter here to remove the um, axle. All right, let's start by uh, removing those tires. Oh, and you'll need uh, this spindle nut uh, tool. I'll, I'll put a link in the description for all this stuff, but you'll need that to remove the uh, spindle nut off of the uh, hub there. Okay, we'll get you in here a little bit so you can see there's just tons of oil and grease and shit everywhere. Uh, pretty sure that's from my blown oil seal. And it's just getting everywhere and collecting with dirt. So we got a couple 21 millimeter bolts to remove uh, in order to remove this caliper. And then I'm gonna go ahead and flip the caliper up zip tie it so it's out of the way and once the caliper is removed uh, we can remove the axle and then uh, bust that seal and get this hub off We're gonna go ahead and remove this axle. I got a tarp set aside, it is a little messy, so we'll be able to pull this out, clean it up, inspect the axle, make sure it's all good to go. Uh, let's see, this is held on to either RTV sealant or a gasket. Right now it's RTV sealant, but I do have the gasket that I'm gonna use for this one. Yeah, 
gears look fine. All right, now in here, we have this little snap ring holding the whole situation in. That's holding in a key. The key is holding in the spindle nut. So I'm gonna grab a pick, uh, remove the ring, and hopefully with a magnet, I can uh, remove that key. I might have to back out the spindle nut just a little bit in case that's pinched in there. lose those. Now you want your spin lit tool here. Spin lit. Okay. Now this should be on there. Fairly well. Oh that is a bit loose. Well See if I can pound this out. Okay, so this guy's got to come off now, so we'll just pound that off. That is the oil seal. Whole thing came out. Fancy that. Okay. So next we're going to want to clean all this crap up. Get all the boogers out. I uh, hope I still have my scotch bright because we want to scotch bright this all off. Make sure it's nice and smooth.
Okay, I think I found my issue here, or one issue at least. The uh, retaining snap ring that holds that outer bearing has snapped. So uh, we did rally pretty hard up on the mountains, old dirt roads and stuff in Prince of Wales. And uh, maybe she got jolted around and snapped it. I have no clue, really. Um, but I gotta get that out of there, get all this cleaned up. I need to source another one. I'm not quite sure if we have one in this town. That is what is left of the snap ring. I gotta find another one. Well, just came back from uh, the parts store and we only got two parts stores in the town I live in and nobody carries the retainer. In fact, Napa can't even find their own part number in their system. They said, that's definitely our part number, but I'm not showing it, but we can probably order it for you. I was like, well, guys, it's 2022. We all can order our own parts now, uh, but that's not the point of a parts store. We want, we want to have parts available, so. Uh, I said, screw that, it's faster if I order it myself, because I don't have to wait for people to deal with freight and contact me and go pick it up. So I'm just going to order one online uh, and uh, I guess get to pounding out that bearing race and uh, get everything cleaned up while we wait. I was really hoping that and I can finish this up while I was nice out because we're in between rainstorms and we're supposed to be getting real heavy rain here pretty soon. So looks like I'll be putting it all back together in the rain. But for the meantime, I'm going to get things cleaned up uh, best I can and get it prepped up for when that retainer does get here so we can just slap it right in and be good to go. All right, guys, as I'm hanging out here pondering life's mysteries, taking a closer look at this uh, bearing assembly and uh, this could have been really really bad I'm glad I got it home in time to catch this before it got really bad so this bearing do this here there we go this bearing when it snapped that retainer, it started pushing the race out. Look how loose that is. That's supposed to be back up quite a ways. It's supposed to be pounded in relatively flush and not flopping around like that. So I thought this felt pretty loose when I removed it and I didn't realize how that happened. Or I didn't realize that happened. I can only guess that it happened when I was on those old logging roads. And maybe uh, by the time this video comes out, I'll have uh, some ride along videos for you to check out and you can see where I go. But yeah, I think I might've been going a little too fast, a little too hard, a little too long with a big ass truck with a camper on the back of it, off-roading and doing off-road things that I probably shouldn't have been doing. Uh, so. So I gotta, I gotta rework pig and rework how I drive pig when I go on these roads. So we'll see. I know I want to put that camper back on the red Chevy and I think I want to do a single wheel conversion on pig and then build a lower pro sleeper canopy on back. And that way I can get in, dig into those mountains like a tick and uh, be a little lighter weight, a little, uh, Maybe a little easier on the parts that way. And also, you know, maybe I won't go... Maybe I won't treat Pig like a pre-runner on these old 50-year-old logging roads <laughs> anymore. Because uh, that's how you break shit. So, lesson learned for me. Now I gotta... Gotta pay the price, but that's life, I suppose. So, alright. So I gotta finish pounding this race out. Looks like it's just gonna pop right out now, because it's... 
just dangling in there. Bob's your uncle. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and pound out that last race there. That way, while we're waiting for that part, we can go ahead and be as proactive as possible and get all the right parts in there. Get everything nice, new, and clean, and so there's no excuses for it blowing up next time. All right. Uh, let's see. You can see the race right down there at the bottom. There's a little bit of a lip that we're gonna be bashing on. And I will say, Probably, you're gonna want to uh, do a little tap on each side and just slowly work it out with a hammer and punch. If you go too much on one side, it's gonna bind up in there and it's gonna give you a little bit of a difficult time getting out. So we'll just tap it out little by little. Bob's your uncle. So, <clears throat> yeah, the race is actually in pretty good condition. Ooh, maybe a little bit of, see a little scratch right there. I don't know if you can pick that up, but it's out. And now I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning out the inside of this here. Make sure that there's no debris uh, stuck where that retaining ring goes. And clean all the dirt out. Give it a good air compression, compression clean and see what happens here. And then uh, after I get that cleaned up, show you a technique for pressing in the or gently pounding in the new races all right just want to show you these parts side by side there's the oils old oil seal there's the new one I'll uh, put the parts uh, links to the, all the parts down in the description for you so you can go ahead and pick them up yourself it's the old bearings new ones the bearings actually look all right, besides this one, because I mashed it up when I was removing the, pounding out the race. Uh, I got the right parts here. All I need is a new retainer, and uh, I'm about to go order one of those up. Uh, first one I found online is not gonna be here for almost a full month, so I'm gonna see if I can find one that'll ship a little sooner than that. All right, guys, it's the next day. I found that bearing retainer online, ordered it up, should be here hopefully sooner than later so we can get pig put back together. Uh, in the meantime though, I got the bearings packed with grease and uh, I, I do get some questions like why do you pack your grease when uh, the bearings are going to be in uh, an oil bath the entire time. It's just out of an abundance of caution guys, you know. Uh, necessary, not 100%, you can pack it in a uh, or bathe it in your axle uh, oil, your gear oil there if you want to, and that'll work just fine. But I like to pack them with grease because why the hell not? A little bit of grease does not hurt anything. It sticks, it lasts a long time, and if something goes wrong where I lose too much oil, at least my bearings will be greased. And because I use friction reducer, uh, Hot Shot Secrets friction reducer, it always keeps the axle temps down anyway so that grease doesn't melt off. And so usually, you know, I pull these apart uh, the bearings are still packed with grease. 
kind of nice. So, you know, do it if you want to or not. I don't care. I like to pack mine just, you know, out of an abundance of caution uh, for this sort of thing because shit goes wrong sometimes. All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get started here. All right, guys, we're getting ready to install that outer race and bearing, the one that's uh, closest to the end, the outside of the hub. That's what the race looks like. It is tapered, just like the bearing. So it's got a skinny side, a little wider side here. It's gonna go skinny side down, and you're gonna wanna put that bearing in there as well, because once that race is in, you know, the bearing's locked in place. There's a couple way, ways you can do this. Uh, if you have a nice, fancy install kit, which I don't, go ahead and use that, make it easy as pie. Uh, otherwise, there's a couple techniques you can use or a combination if you want. You can take your old race, take a die grinder or an angle grinder and cut it and then use that uh, to tap in the, or to uh, use that over the one that you're gonna install uh, to tap that in place so that when you're using your punch, you're not marring up the good race, you're marring up the uh, one that uh, it's not going to be installed. You're just going to use this. It's a little tamper and you cut that hole in there so that it compresses to make this race uh, easier to pull back out when you're done installing it. For this outer one, you could also use uh, this disc from a U-joint, ball joint install kit. As you see, it fits right over and you can tamper that in as well. Fits about perfect here on that outer one. On the larger size one, though, I don't have a big enough disc to uh, use that trick, so I'm gonna use uh, the old race to uh, pound the new one in. All right, get you turned around and uh, let's get this installed. All right, guys, trying to get you positioned here so that you can see what's going on. A little difficult, but we'll try to make it work. Okay, so I got my bearings packed with grease and I'm going to go ahead and start dropping that into place. Actually, I'm going to do the bearing first. Remember it goes skinny side up and then fat side down or closer to the uh, outside of the hub. Everything's tapered, remember? Put our new one in place. Try to make sure she's lined up. And then, you can drop this steely snake it right on top. Now what I wish I had, which I don't, is a uh, pipe big enough to fit around there to pound down. The one that I do have is uh, on my jack, and that jack's being used uh, to prop up the truck right now, so that's uh, where it's got to be. So we're just going to try to do this as uh, gingerly as possible. I'm going to actually use the fat end down instead of the smaller end down so I get a little better surface area. And just like when we're removing it, we want to go all the way around and not just hammer down on one side so that we don't kink the race in there. And then that'd be a big pain in the ass. So pull it out, see how we're doing. Everything looks pretty good. Okay, keep on moving like this. Seems to be doing what we want it to. kinked up. Everything still looks good. Looks like we got a little bit further to go. And of course we're trying to push it back uh, beyond the lip where that retainer goes.
Yeah, just about there. Yep, almost there. Just a little bit further. If you can see this, I'll show if I can get you in there a little closer. Okay, so as you can see, we're not quite all the way up yet, so we still got a little bit of pounding to do until that race is all the way seated in the hub. Definitely don't want any floppage. Actually, for these final taps, I'm just gonna do this. So now. That bearing is sticking out a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. The bearing ridge is sticking out just a little bit over the race now. Or the race, yeah, just a little bit over the race. I don't want to hit the bearing, so I'm just going to finish it off by doing some little taps. Feels like it's bottomed out. Flip it back over. Yep. She looks like she's there. Just inspecting. Yeah. Looks like she's fully seated. Got freaking dog hair everywhere. Okay. So that bearing is installed, moves just fine, and I suppose now I could install this other race if I wanted to, but I think I'm just going to wait until I get the uh, retainer and put that in first and then finish off this race. So I guess that'll be it for the rest of the week, I guess, until... I guess that'll be it for the rest of the, the week. I mean, it'll only be a second for you guys, but I gotta wait for that retainer to come in because ain't nobody got that part in town. So, the joys of living in Alaska. Got two parts stores in the town I live in and they never have the parts I need. But they can order them for you. <laughs> All right, guys, check in with you here uh, in a few days. All right, guys, it is one week later, and we got the retaining, or the bearing retainer. Uh, took a little while to get here, but I got here last, or yesterday sometime, and uh, today decided to stop raining. It's been raining this entire time, so I'm pretty stoked to get this all slapped back together. So we're going to go ahead and install this bearing, or this uh, retainer. Uh, you are going to need some um, uh, snap ring pliers. Uh, I've done this before with some various types of angled long pliers and it really sucks ass, so hopefully these work. Okay, get you turned around. Hopefully I can get this on the first try here. So my pliers are just barely, barely too small, so I'm going to pinch it in with my hands. Hopefully I can get this. I'm going to have to change the ends here. Okay. Let's see. So there's this nice little ridge here. You want to make sure it's all cleaned out of debris and shit. And then... Oh, son of a bitch.
Okay. Gotta admit, that's my least favorite part. But she's in there. Okay. So it's time to install a new race. And you want to go flat end down. Make sure it's all cleaned off of debris and shit. Go flat end down. Place our old race that we cut on top. And let's see. If I had something nice and flat, big piece of tubing, I think that'd be ideal. But let's see what we can do here. Okay, I think that is there, but I'm just going to go around again. Oh, yeah, I can feel it. Feel it bottom out too. Check with that pick. Everything looks good. Okay, and she's bottomed out. So we'll take our fresh bearing here, already packed with grease. Throw that in. Take our brand new seal. Here's your part number. 291-319. Uh, the GM part number is 158-23962. That fits right on top. Flattened all the way around. Actually, gonna use that technique here. Looks pretty good. Bearing feels like it's in there. Okay. Now we're ready for installation. All right, so here we are. Ready to do our installation. Done all the prep work. I know my hub assembly looks beat up. It looks like a bearing has exploded in this thing once or twice. But I got this, the mating surfaces as well cleaned off as I could. We're getting ready to install. I am just gonna put a little bit of gear oil right on the seal there so it's not dry when we're installing it makes it a little bit easier just a little bit there let me get all that up in there there we go okay so here's the tricky part the part that seems to be subject of much debate there's plenty of plenty of people saying different things out there and how to do it so 
I uh, went through the trouble of looking through everything and scouring the internet to try to find the right answer for you. And this one uh, seems to be the most consistent. So, and that is, you know, what, how do you put on the hub and load the bearing and uh, what pressure do you put it at? A lot of people just put it on the impact and hammer it home until it's there. Other people do it by feel. I've done that before and it works just fine, but let's try to get you some specs. So first, we want to put this on. And the idea is to seat that oil seal on your hub and load the bearing just enough but not too much, not too little. If you load it too much, you're gonna pinch the bearings and they will prematurely wear out. Do it too little and your hub will be flopping around a little bit and your oil seal will probably break on you. So one method I found that I, I liked and I haven't tried it yet, but it seems like a good one to try out is we're gonna put the spindle nut on, we're gonna to torque it to 52 pounds and that should seat that seal and load the bearing just enough and then we're going to back off the spindle nut put it on hand tight key it and put it all back together and see if it works get this started okay. try this because this torque I mean the torque wrench is really long and as you can imagine when you're trying to like push this big thing on there it just ain't freaking doing what you want it to do there. I'm just going to drive it in so that the key matches.
yeah that so it does take about as much force to get it started as it does to keep it going bearings are loaded should be right about where you want it so throw that key back in there oh come on Go in just a skosh. Keeper key is in. See that? Key is in. Kind of awkward doing this with the camera here. One second. We're gonna take this guy. look like that got our key in the key slot got our keeper in there or a little retaining snap ring this feels good to go now all we got to do is zip our caliper back on well we got to put this guy back on caliper wheels all right I have a gasket for this so I'm gonna give you the part number for this I'm gonna give you the part number for that retaining bearing ring and I'll give you part numbers for the tools and shit that you need or links, sorry. Links is what I mean. Links are all in the description, you guys. Okay, we got our gasket here, part 55350. As you see, she lines up perfect. Axle's clean, good to go. Got our gasket here. Alright guys, that is the job, that's how you do it. As you see, it is winter right now. So I did this job a couple of months ago and everything has been holding just fine, so that's good. Uh, no, no leaks, no rattles, no nothing, so everything is good to go. Um, I don't think there's any final thoughts or closing anything that I want to say. Besides, uh, thanks for sticking around this long if you made it to the end. Hope it helped you out in some way. And whew, it's freaking cold out right now, but I'm going to go ahead and load the camper up and go do some camping this weekend. So, 
You guys have a good day.